Hello, my name is Ruri and I'm an artist. And today we're making a video about drawing portraits. Now, there's a lot of concern about lockdown and being stuck at home, but this is a good opportunity to learn something new. Lots of people think portraits can be difficult and they're quite concerned about things like the details of the face and whatnot. But this is a good opportunity to see how simple the structure of a face is and we'll just do a step-by-step -step basic achievable portrait. So we have some materials that you're likely to have at home. The first one, paper, such as this. Pen, a pencil, or a pen, and thirdly, a mirror, like this. Using these three items, you can now create a self-portrait. Using the mirror, you can have a good look at yourself. You may see your reflection every day, but never really think who you are. A self-portrait gives you a chance to really reflect on your life experiences, the history or the story that the details of your face can tell. It's a great way of expressing that. I do have three different examples of techniques, but we'll start with a basic drawing so you understand the structure and creation of a face. It's quite simple. It's not going to be perfect, but this will be a good experience to start with. And with that experience, we can build on it and make it better and better and better. As an artist, I have the experience doing these portraits a thousand times over. And that's how you learn. The second example, what we're going to do is one line drawing. And lastly, we're going to add colour. That's what we have all these materials for. We have chalk here, which is quite good for big chunky blocks with different shades. And then we have pens quite simple and straightforward. We have coloured pencils. That's quite good for blending. If you make a mistake, you can work with it. You can shade it in or out. Lastly, and sometimes considered the most useful, is this, an egg. You might be wondering, why an egg? Well, we'll have a look. Hello. So to start with, we're going to focus on the basic structure of a face. We start with the big, typically an outline, and then we go smaller and smaller until we get to the final details. Now remember we had an egg. We can actually look at the shape of an egg and use that as a template for the shape of the head. This is a really good thing to help you with your drawing at the beginning. And just as a tip, most of the mistakes when you start an artistry, most people will put the eye line quite high or sometimes quite low on the face. So that's why we use the egg when we draw a line. The line is in the halfway mark. And we can use this to change the perspective of whatever we're drawing. So we can look up, down, to the side. That eye line doesn't change. So just to give you a better picture of that, here we have the egg.
Okay, now it's time to get started on drawing. If you can grab your materials. I've got my pencils here. Just a quick reminder, you can pause the video at any time, just in case you maybe need to find more paper or set up your station. The number one thing to remember is your mirror. You'll need that to see what you want to be drawing. So I have three pencils. Pencils can come in different levels. So we have the H groups and the B groups. We have H7, which is the weakest pencil. It goes all the way up to H1, which is the boldest pencil. And then we have the B as well. The B can go from one to a large number of numbers. They're quite strong. So what we have here is the H7, the HB, and the B9. As I said earlier, we'll use the structure of the egg to give us an idea of shape. And there we go, a simple start. I'm using H7, which is quite a good pencil. It's quite forgiving, you can make sure you get the shape right. And the more confident you get, you can use a more bold, more permanent pencil. The H7 really lets you get your confidence up before you move on to other materials. So we have the basic face shape here. We're going to move on to the eyes. As I said earlier, more often than not, the eyes sit in the wrong place. Many people put eyes quite high up. The reason being is we have a lot of features on our lower half of the face and people think that we need to apportion that properly. But I'm going to draw a line to show where the eye should sit. You can just use your hand here to check and make sure that you've got the distance is right. A simple line. And I quite like to put a vertical line as well, just to give me a clear idea. And that's it. Now, when we're drawing the eyes, it's good to break it down into five sections so we can properly space it out. That means we can include the eye, the bridge of the nose, make sure the ears are in the right place. So I'm going to draw five marks divide out where the eyes should sit properly. I have my five markers here. I'm going to move on to the next step and use the HB pencil. So that's the eyes, we typically draw an oval shape with kind of sharper points. It's typically the shape of the eye inside the eyelid that we can see. So if we draw the top out first, the bottom follows quite easily. Next, we're going to draw the nose section. And for the nose, I'll be breaking it down into thirds. So if we imagine a third is the forehead, a third is the nose, and the last third is the lower part of the face. So I'll just make a few marks. And that's it.
and I'll make a few markings here like a triangle between the eyes using them as a guide. If we have a look at the mouth, it sits just above the middle between the bottom of the face and the nose. So if you just rough out where the mouth will sit, you can make a small mark, just a little bit higher than you would normally think. And then if we draw the irises roughly in the eyes, we can use those as a guide to indicate where the mouth reaches to. Next, if we move on to ears, we can put the bottom of the ears halfway between the nose and the mouth, and the top of it just slightly above the eyes. Just going to focus on the brow for a moment. Just something simple like that to start. So I'm going to be using the B now for more details. And you can see here, we're going to have a few bumps for the nostrils. And we'll have an extra bump just going underneath like that. And then if we can flare the outsides ever so slightly. And that's it. You'll see the lip tends not to follow a perfect line. There's usually a dip in the centre. And you'll see the top lip is typically thinner than the bottom lip. So we'll just sketch that out. Again, just simple lines. And if we use the eye as a guide line, we can mark out roughly where the neck would sit. As you can see here, we've got the rough structure of a face. There's not too much detail, but this is always a good start. And this is what I use for the start of my drawings. And we can add things like glasses, beards, hair. Hair's pretty simple. We just sketch whatever shape of hair we usually have. There you go. Maybe if you want to add glasses, you can add this type of design. This is obviously a very general face and facial features can be so varied and expressive. It's very much up to yourself what you want to draw. But that's the basic structure of a face. Hopefully you've enjoyed taking in these basic steps. You'll definitely be able to make more detailed projects using them going forward. Hello. Now we'll move on to the second part of the video. So as we spoke about earlier, we have some various materials that we can use. So we can have pencils, now we can have chalks, and lastly felt tip pens.
Pencils are quite easy, quite simple to use. There's a wide range of colours. We can show you some examples here. Secondly, we have the chalks. Chalks are a beautiful material to use. Unfortunately, they can be a little bit tricky and you can make mistakes easily, but the colours they produce can be beautiful. And thirdly, we have felt tip pens, the most permanent of all materials. They can be quite challenging. They could reinforce the need to avoid mistakes. So hopefully you can see the difference that despite using the same colours, the three materials have produced very, very different effects. So, now we're going to do a quick, simple and hopefully funny portrait drawing. We're going to do the one line challenge. So when you put your pen to paper, it doesn't come off. So we've got our mirror here, and I've got some materials. Remember we just went over a few materials. It's up to you what you like to pick. However, I'm going to use felt pen, because it's quite bold and you're going to get a good quick result from it. And really where you want to get started, it's up to you. This is a fun one just to have a go.
Okay, there we go. It's simple, it's quick, it's rough. I've got some other examples to have a look at. Now we're going to move on to the last part and we're going to play with colour. The one line challenge was very focused and you had to be quite critical. But now with the inclusion of colour, you can put a bit more of your own personality into it. When choosing what colours you want, it's really up to you. In terms of materials, I'm going to use chalk. I love chalk. It's a great material to play about with. For colours, I'm going to pick green, yellow and blue. I like to mix the kind of light colours, the dark colours, catch some of the darkness in the bottom of the face. So I'm going to do just a quick sketch out.
Okay. Really, it's not exceptionally important to get the colours accurate. It's more about playing about and expressing your feelings. It's good to get a little bit lost in the production of the picture. I've got some other examples for you to have a look at, just to see how a mixture of colours can create different effects. Those three pictures are beautiful. It's great to see the mixture of colours and really be influenced by them. And that's us. We've been through our three videos. We've got the basics, we've done the one line challenge, and we've done the very evocative colours. I hope you take in what you've learned here today. I hope you use it with yourself, with your family. You can draw not just your self-portrait, but things around you. And really enjoy what's around you. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.